Today on the channel, I'm gonna show you how we take this and this and make a delicious pizza. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake, you're watching Roman Cook. Today on the channel, we're cooking pizza. It's the second cook on the brand new Yoder pizza oven. First cook, we did a calzone, and let me tell you, it did an amazing job. Turned out great, I was really happy with it, so I'm excited to see what happens when we try pizza. But we're not gonna do just any pizza, we're gonna do a cast iron pizza. So before we can do anything, this pizza dough I picked up at the pizza shop yesterday, I put it in the fridge overnight, it's been out for about an hour. What we wanna do now is we wanna let this rest and rise a little bit more inside of our cast iron pan. So we're gonna put some olive oil in here and we're gonna coat it all over. This will make sure it doesn't stick. It's also gonna give us a nice crust all around the outside. Now, if you're keeping your pizza dough in the fridge and it gets a little bit dry, because you didn't seal it properly, not a big deal. All you gotta do is take some water and rub it all over the top and let it sit for about an hour and a half and it will dry right up again. So we're gonna stretch this out a little bit. I'm trying to get it roughly the size of the pan here. A bunch of air in the center there. I'm just gonna knock that out. There we go. And we're gonna flip it over. We want it all nice and coated in the olive oil. So now we've got our pizza dough all stretched out. This is a 12 inch skillet, just so you're aware. You could actually do this in a 10 inch skillet. It will make a really thick pizza. It's actually kind of delicious, uh, but I want to do a 12 inch one today. Experiment, because I've done both, and depending on your mood, they're both unique. What we're going to do here is we've got all the sides, top and bottom, coated in olive oil. That's going to do a few things for us. Number one, we want this to sit for another 30, 40 minutes, and that's going to rise a little bit and it's gonna give us time for the pizza oven to come up to temperature. The olive oil is gonna keep it from drying out. It's gonna give it a little bit of flavor and because we're coated all on the outside, it's actually gonna give us a nice crisp crust that's not gonna stick. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this guy inside, let it sit for 30, 40 minutes and we're gonna get ready to fire up the pizza oven. So let's fire up our pizza oven here. Now we wanna make sure we've got a, a clean firebox. So we're just gonna lift this up kind of slide it off to the side. I just cleaned this before I used it. And when you move this over, we're gonna latch it back on so it's centered over the firebox properly. And you can just pull it. Now I know we're in the right spot. Turn this guy on. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna let this preheat. Now, it really takes a good 25, 30 minutes to preheat properly. The longer that you let it preheat, the better results you're gonna have, right? Because we, we want a couple things to happen here. Number one, we want our pellet grill to come up to temperature. Uh, number two, we want the stone to come up to temperature, and we want the whole housing to come up to temperature. So today, I'm gonna rock it at 500, and just because our temperature comes up to 500 doesn't mean that everything else is at 500. Yeah, so let's start to come up to temperature and then for best results, get yourself one of those laser temperature guns and that way you'll know what you're working with. We want our stone to be between 500 and 550 for what I'm trying to do. Uh, now you could cook, crank this up to 600 degrees and you're gonna get a stone temp probably in the neighborhood of 650-ish and upwards of 750 over top. We're not going that high today. I will do a Neapolitan style pizza in the future, but today I need a little bit lower temperature because it's gonna be a thicker pizza and I need time for it to cook. So we're gonna do it at 500 and see how, how it works. We've got a little bit of smoke there. We're gonna close it up here and I'm gonna dial this up to 500 right out of the gate. And today I'm just using some Bear Mountain Hickory. That's what I have the most of. Flavor profile doesn't really matter that much. Just use a good quality pellet so you can make sure you can hit those nice high temps. I'll bring you back when it's time to get the pizza ready and get it on the Yoder. It's been exactly 30 minutes, and let me tell you, this pizza oven heats up way quicker than I expected. At 20 minutes in, it was really already up to temperature, 
Here's what I'm talking about with one of these laser guns. I'll put a link down below. You can get an inexpensive one on Amazon. But I mean, 555 on the top, 540 on the stone. So at 20 minutes in, I was at 480 on the stone and 525 up top. Now, I think one of the reasons why it preheats so quickly and it's a pizza oven, so it's supposed to do this, but that fire is coming up over top and firing the heat into the pizza stone and it's getting heat soaked really, really quickly. So in the instruction manual, they say 15 to 20 minutes. I kind of thought you needed to let it preheat a little bit until it got closer to temperature and then start your, te your uh, countdown. But now being the second use, I can tell you that in 20 minutes, it's pretty darn hot. Now, a little bit of extra time is not gonna hurt anyone. Let's look at our pizza. So what's happened here is we've got a little bit more air in here and our dough has risen a little bit. Now you could make this even rise more uh, if you didn't let it get the room temperature as much and you put it in here sooner and let it come up to room temperature in here and it would rise up even more. However, once we hit this with heat, it's gonna thicken up as well. So in my calzone video, I talked about my pizza sauce here. Just put them in the blender canned tomatoes these are san marzano tomatoes I, I think the brand is called chow i'm drawing a blank of the brand uh, i'll put a picture up here of it get them from uh, at bbq.com uh, but all you do is you put it in a blender and pulse it a couple times now you can see i've got some chunks of tomatoes in here i could have pulsed it maybe once or twice more but up to you now lots of people will actually put this in an oven or an oven a pan a pot <laughs> and thicken it up a little bit i'm fine how it is actually i i don't uh, go through that extra step i am putting a pretty heavy sauce on here trying to make sure it doesn't jump off the edge and the reason for that is i'm going to actually put an extra layer of cheese so i want my sauce to balance out my cheese and this is just one can of whole tomatoes pulse twice tablespoon of salt tablespoon of pep pepper and some basil so what I decided to do is I had a little bit of provolone left over that I've got to get rid of. So I thought, what the heck, we'll put it on some pizza. And don't worry, we're going to use some, some mozzarella as well. I just wanted to give it a base layer. And we've got some fresh grated, low moisture mozzarella here. And that, my friends, is going to be some cheesy goodness. And I'm keeping it simple. We're doing some pepperoni and onions. However, one of the nice things about doing it yourself is you can put as much or as few toppings as you like. I can't tell you how many times I go to a pizza place, I ask for extra onion, pay for extra onion, and it never happens. So it just you get tired of doing that. When you make them at home, you don't have to worry about it. Nice little bed of pepperoni there. Get some onions. Now I cut these onions a little thicker than normal just so they don't burn. All right. Well, I got three pepperonis left. Can't leave them there, feeling all lonely. We'll put a little tiny bit of cheese on top just to help keep it all together. And that, my friends, is looking tasty. Now, the one thing you're gonna want here is, I've just got some welding gloves any high temp glove will work and we're going to throw this guy in now first there's a little extra step here one of the things i really like about the yoder you can use the top <laughs> so in my calzone video i put a little bit of sauce in the pan and i just put it on top and in eight minutes it was nice and similar sim simmering thickened up had a nice little dipping sauce for the calzone now with the cast iron pizza, one of the things I want to happen is I want to build up a nice crust on the bottom. So typically when I have made these inside, I would put the burner on the stove on high and I would wait until it started sizzling the oil and I'd wait about two or three minutes and then I put it in the oven. So we're gonna do something similar here uh, because I don't want the top to be all cooked before I get that nice crust on the bottom I'm looking for. So I'm gonna give it a couple minutes. I want to wait till I hear some sizzle in there and then we'll put it in. I'll bring you back when we put it in the oven. So it took about a, a minute and a half to start sizzling the way we wanted. I let it go another couple minutes. You can hear that sizzle. That's what we're looking for. You can see the dough has already risen a little bit. And now we're going to 
I mean, it's looking good already, except for it's not finished cooking. And in we go. All right, it's been seven minutes. Let's get this guy out. Whew, that is hot. <laughs> Man, looking delicious. Sizzling away. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get this out of this pan. Maybe. Even through those welding gloves, I can feel that heat. And that's what we're left with, folks. How's that for a delicious looking pizza? Quite hot. We're gonna let this cool down for a minute and then we'll cut into it and I'll give you a wrap up, tell you how long it took and how it tastes. been five minutes, it's gotta be cool enough because I can't take the smell anymore. You can look on the bottom, it's got a gorgeous crust down there. Now, here's how we cooked it. Four and a half minutes up top, we had it at 500 degrees. It took about a minute and a half for the pan to start to sizzle, the oil in the cast iron pan around the outside. So I let it go another three minutes. Then we put it in the oven and around the three minute mark, our pan, was in on an angler. I just rotated the handle, <clears throat> excuse me, to the other side just to make sure we get some even cooking. The one thing I'm going to want to have here is like a big cast iron pan with no handles on it so then I can rotate it around. You can see we've got a little hot here. We weren't as hot here so I could have actually rotated around if I didn't have to worry about the handle. Other than that, um, seven minute cook time inside the oven. So a total of 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes. And it's looking delicious. Let's cut into it. go. Now the great thing about one of these guys is that all your toppings stay exactly where you want. Mm. Oops. Now you can see we've got a nice thick, ooh, we're losing our cheese here. Nice thick crust. Mm. Bear with me for a sec. Look at that golden brown bottom. It's got delicious bite through. This is more like a, um, like a pizza type of pizza where you've got a little bit of bite at the bottom, but the rest of it's nice and airy and chewy and delicious. <laughs> this thing, I've been using it in my Instagram posts, hashtag uh, game changer. I mean, it, it really is. The one thing about something like this is that we can adjust our temperature the entire time, so you've got full control over that. I have an, or had an uni, I just sold it to my, my buddy. Great oven. Here's the problem. Majority of the people are using the gas one so you can adjust it because in that small oven, putting in the right amount of wood is definitely a learning curve. Even in my big pizza oven, I've struggled a little bit with controlling the temperature, whereas this thing, it's a set it and forget it. You get your temperature, you throw your pizza in or whatever you're cooking, and it just turns out delicious. I mean, this is an absolute delicious pizza. Can't say a, enough good things about it so far. Cook number two, right? I don't have any practice on this. Pulled it out of the box, cooked a calzone, cooked a pizza, knocked it out of the park, and it's friggin' delicious. So if you're on the fence, definitely consider this. I think you're gonna love it. Works on the 640, works on the 480. Can't go wrong with it as far as I'm concerned. Hopefully you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, do so below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.